Do actuators need to know how to code? Yes. Yes, they do. And in this video, I'll be talking about exactly which programming languages they most often use and why. Hi, my name is Bella, and today I'm coming to you from my dorm at UW-Madison, where I'm a senior studying actuarial science and risk management and insurance. I've had two actuarial internships, and I've passed two actuarial exams. Now, first of all, all companies are going to use a different set of programming languages. However, one that they are for sure all going to use is Excel. I know, I know. The classic, the loved, the hated Excel has been around for many years already, and it is here to stay for at least a little while longer as it is still one of the most used programs in actual science. If you're not familiar with Excel, a quick overview is that it can be used to do basic math functions. It can be used to import data sets and take a look at what's going on with them. It can be used to even manipulate those data sets, do a lot of copy and pasting and organizing data that has been run in other programs. Now in Excel, there is a tool called macros which allows you to do a whole process in excel with the click of a button so basically you tell a macro what you want to be done whether that's copy and pasting certain data from other tabs and then in the future if you want that same process to be done you just click the macro that you created and it runs that process automatically in my internship this past summer i was actually working to help automate these macros by working in their coding language which is called vba so if you want a macro to do a specific thing, you can go into the code of the macro, which is the VBA language, and write the code for what you want it to do. And in my internship this past summer, I wrote a bunch of code. You can look at my previous videos where I actually go through some of the code that I wrote and see how it was used. In addition to Excel and Excel VBA, a lot of companies use other programming languages because Excel is not the best at handling large data sets like large data sets. For example, if a company has policyholders across the nation, so they're insuring people from states like Georgia, New York, Wisconsin, California, Oregon, and they're insuring tons and tons of people, they're going to have a lot of data, probably over a hundred thousand, maybe even a million entries. And what happens when you use that much data in Excel is it tends to freeze up. So some of the other programming languages that are used are RStudio, Python, Alteryx, SAS, and SQL. Now I know I just mentioned like six different coding languages and you're probably like, whoa, 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 how am I supposed to learn all these programming languages? That's crazy. The reason there are so many different programming languages and options to use is because they all have their pros and cons. And just a helpful tip, if you know how to work in at least one or two programming languages, it's pretty easy to pick up the others. So don't be worried if you only know RStudio or Python and your employer asks you to work in SAS or SQL. If you know Python or RStudio, you'll be able to have those transferable skills to work in SAS or SQL. It's just learning how to write things in a different way. Also, if you're a student, no one, and I promise you, no one is expecting you to be an expert in any of these programming languages. They understand that it takes time and practice to build up these skills. And so that's why many internships and even entry level jobs have training programs where they teach you how to use these programming languages or give you time to learn these on your own. Hopefully you have had the opportunity in your classes at school though to do some projects or assignments or homework in these different coding languages to at least get some practice. But if you haven't yet and you'd like to get some experience, there are plenty of resources you can go to. You can go on LinkedIn learning courses. You can watch YouTube tutorials. You could participate in an online coding challenge, which is where you just enter into this challenge online. They give you a prompt or a coding challenge and then you do it and you get some practice out of it. In any of the programs that I've mentioned, there is also a help button like in the toolbar. And if you click on that, there's usually a help section and it gives you an overview of some of the basic functions in that program. There's also a website called learnpython.org, which I've even used, and it will help you go from level zero of knowing Python to level 10 if you want by giving you interactive practice problems and teaching you just the basics of Python. It's really helpful. And although the name of the website is learnpython.org, you can also use the website to learn SQL. So let's go back and talk about what one of those advantages or disadvantages would be between using RStudio and Python, for example. So I think most actuaries are pretty familiar with RStudio. And I think the reason for this is because 
because RStudio is really great for data visualization, whereas Python is better for running deeper models, such as neural networks. But in most cases of what actuaries are doing, they're not running those deeper models, which is why, in my experience, RStudio is more often used rather than Python. Also, if you are more familiar with data science and those data science programming tools, Python is probably more intuitive to you. In comparison to RStudio and Python, there's also a program called Alteryx, which I mentioned before, but it's definitely not as common as RStudio or Python at most companies. As of right now, the reason for this is probably because the cost to install Alteryx is pretty expensive, but I do think there are some advantages to it. I used Alteryx in my first internship actually with AIG, where I completed two projects. I found working in Alteryx to be pretty cool. It is way more user-friendly. It allows you to have these like tools, which I can show on the screen, and really like allow you to visualize the automation process. So what I did in these projects, a brief overview, is I just, I pulled a bunch of data from Excel and Excel worksheets, different workbooks, and amended them grouped by basically like manipulated the data into the kind of output that we wanted. But what I really liked about Alteryx and why I actually found it um, really helpful was that it really allowed me to visualize the process and like understand exactly what I was doing. Because I think sometimes, especially when you're new to coding, you can get really lost in all of the lines of code and maybe like you're not totally sure what does what like when you're looking at it from a bird's eye perspective so given all of this information if you've never coded before which program should you start in i feel like definitely excel maybe not excel vba but just like regular excel get familiar with it understand the basic functions of it because you're definitely going to run into it then I would say probably RStudio or Python. I think those are really good programs to just get a basic sense of coding and understand how to define variables and things like that. And if your company pays for it, I would also highly recommend looking into Alteryx. All right, last topic I wanna talk about is why do actuaries even need to know how to code? Like, can't they just write it with paper and pencil? Wouldn't it be so much easier if we didn't have to learn all this stuff? Well, no, no it wouldn't. Actuaries work with a ton of data. Insurance companies are very, very large companies and they have tons of policyholders, tons of claims, tons of, you know, math that goes into calculating the premiums, into calculating reserves that the company has to keep. There's a ton of data that has to be worked with. And so trying to do these calculations that actuaries do without these coding programs would take a ton of time. A really big reason why actuaries need to know how to code too is because they do a lot of predictive modeling. Basically, they want to see, based on historical data, based on things that have happened in the past, what is going to happen in the future. And actuaries, of course, need to know this so that they can plan out their prices that they're going to charge to the insurance. Along with predictive modeling, actuaries need to know how to model the frequency and severity of claims each year. How do we model how many claims we're going to receive? How do we model the severity of those losses? So the size, the dollar amount, how much money we're going to have to pay to each insured. All of these different things require automation and a lot of math and prediction and data modeling and analysis. And there's just a ton of things to do, which is why coding is needed because it just speeds up the process and also reduces human error. Imagine if we were to do all these things by paper and pen and you made a single number error, then all the rest of your calculations are going to be thrown off. But what's nice about using computers sometimes is that it does those calculations for you. And so you don't always have to worry about calculation error. However, that is not to say that data validation is not still needed. Of course, we still need data validation, which is actually what a majority of my internship this past summer was, where I created a VBA process, a couple of them actually. And then although I automated the process that I needed to, I had to make sure that the code that I wrote was actually doing what I needed it to do. So I had to write more code to check the code that I had previously written. All right, that is the end of the video. I hope you all found it helpful. If you have any remaining questions, feel free to comment down below. I will be sure to respond. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more actual science related videos.